Hello and welcome to Catholic Social Teaching 101. I'm Jim Grant, your host, and it's my pleasure today to be sharing with you Catholic Social Teaching as it is taught and given to us from the California Catholic Conference through the person of Steve Fahanich, who is the Senior Director of Advocacy and Education for the California Catholic Conference of Bishops. Steve, it's a privilege to have you here to join us on our Catholic Social Teaching series. It's Program 7, and we're calling it Faith and Politics. Would you like to start your presentation letting us know about the CCC, your work there, and what it is that the Conference of Bishops is doing for us as a church in California? Well, terrific, Jim. Thank you for having me. I really I enjoy coming down to, to Fresno, the, the Central Valley, the heart of California. It's a, it's a beautiful place down here, and it's a, uh, just great to be here. Well, let me start by explaining the, the Catholic, uh, California Catholic Conference. The uh, conference is the collection of bishops in California. So we have about 24, 25 active bishops in California. We have two archdioceses and um, uh, 10 dioceses, of which Fresno is one of them. Um, so basically those dioceses get together and hire a staff in Sacramento. And then uh, we are the official voice of the Catholic community in, in California. We're based up in Sacramento. We work all around the state. Uh, we work with ministries, different ministries in the diocese and archdiocese uh, to help explain, promote, advocate on different public policy issues. Um, in some states, like for instance, our neighbor in Nevada, they have two uh, dioceses, so they don't necessarily have a conference. Uh, if, the, if the bishops in Nevada want to talk about public policy, they pick up the phone and call each other. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated in California with, with 24, 25 uh, bishops. Uh, and uh, we get together twice a year with the bishops to go over different policy uh, issues. It's, it's always a, a terribly jam-packed uh, mission or, or meeting. So our, our mission uh, in the conference is to advocate with the legislative, uh, administrative, and judicial branches of the state government uh, for the Catholic Church and public policy. So we have uh, three registered lobbyists, uh, that work in the capital on a daily basis. And like most things in, in, um, in most organizations, there's a flow to the legislature. Um, at the start of a two-year session, you may have anywhere from 4,000 to 5,000 bills introduced. So those uh, lobbyists that we have, their jobs go through all those bills. Now and so um, they'll sort through all those bills, and then we'll decide you know, which ones... Uh, the, to bring to the bishops, and the bishops will decide which ones we're going to pursue for that year. Now, now that normally session. we think of lobbyists, at least generally, these aren't good people. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> our lobbyists are obviously having a much different purpose than what would be a paid lobbyist pushing for things such as for the big corporations. Mm -hmm. This would be... So help us appreciate, I guess, the importance of what the Catholic Church is as a lobby? Well, um, the, the California Catholic Conference is one of the few organizations in Sacramento that could talk to lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Because as you say, uh, so many lobbyists have a specific interest, their uh, specific area of expertise, say, and they're known for that area of expertise. And usually, they stay on one side of the aisle. So the Catholic Conference, however, we don't represent a particular special interest unless you consider the poor, uh, the common good. Those aren't really special interests. Those are interests that we all hold in common. Um, so we can talk to legislators on both sides of the aisle. It puts us in a unique position um, and uh, you know, makes life interesting, especially when there's a divided government, when you have a Democratic uh, legislature uh, and a Republican governor or vice versa. Uh, we could play a very key role in that. Um, so that, this is what we do. We work on the lobbying. Um, uh, we also work with uh, certain projects that make sense doing a state from a statewide organization. So we do restorative justice, uh, environmental uh, projects, um, so that uh, things that the bishops may want to do, but it wouldn't make sense to do in just only one diocese. So we help on certain things like that. 
For instance, we now manage the uh, or coordinate the um, chaplaincy program in state prisons. You know, so that's something that doesn't make sense for one diocese to do. You know, I went to that meeting with the chaplain so I can bear witness that it's very important that certain things are done from a state point of view, a state perspective. Some things are better diocesan, some are better conference-wide. Now, there are certain uh, identified legislative priorities uh, on this tracking of the lobby legislation. What are some of those priorities? Well, those are the priorities that the bishops have laid out for us. Um, and uh, the first and foremost is the reverence for life, um, the, the right to life. That's uh, our primary focus. And one of the most challenging areas to work on in a state like California. Um, we also work towards promotion of human dignity. And that could that encompass a lot of things. That could be anything from clean water to jobs to economic assistance for those that, that are, are uh, uh, poor and challenged. So that's a kind of a wide area. And then education as well. Now, it's a, it's, a, it's a good illustration to show how we don't just lobby on behalf of Catholic schools, but we lobby yeah. on behalf of a good education for all children. So that is uh, a way we promote the common good. Um, religious liberty, of course, always an issue and becoming more and more oh, of an issue, yeah. issue. Conscious rights are becoming more and more of an issue. Um, family life. Another area we specialize in and, and work on. It was interesting. There was a, a, a study just released by a major public policy uh, research organization in California that said how important parents were to a child's education. And I thought, well... Doesn't that sound like us? Yeah. I mean, haven't we been saying that for 2,000 <laughs> years? And, and, you know, I, I'm making fun of it. But it's, it was a good study. And it's, it's something that educators, educators know is, is important. Oh, so. yeah. Um, but um, so family life, restorative justice, um, which is something we're working on a major bill this year yeah. on that. Um, and then finally, because we are in California, we also work on immigration issues. Now, that's interesting because that's a, a, a national issue. So there's certain things we can and can't do. Um, but... Um, uh, it is so important here in California because we have so many immigrants uh, seeking to be naturalized and uh, that, that we do work on that. And it's very near and dear to the hearts of the bishops. Regarding restorative justice, I just want to remind our viewers that at our website we have some material that the CCC sent down to us from Linda Warner. It would be the um, discussion that was held in the Capitol over this issue, AB 2590. We had some reports that were done with our own Judge Gottlieb here in town. Uh, he was heard during the hearing, and we also heard some of our own representatives speaking either in favor of this bill or in opposition. If you go to our website, you will find that material, Compliments of the California Catholic Conference. Um, so... Um Thanks for that, for mentioning that. That AB 2590 has passed the Senate, and we are hoping that, or I'm sorry, it's passed the Assembly, and we're the hoping it'll pass the Senate as well. So, you know, we have the lobbyists that work there, but one of the main jobs of a bishop is teaching. So really, our job is to help teach, uh, help the bishops fulfill that obligation to teach. And uh, there's a big Catholic community uh, in California. We have... 11, 12 million Catholics, we're about a third of the population. There's 1,100 parishes in the state of California. Things from, you know, mega parishes in the south and the Central Valley to, you know, parishes that maybe have 100 people up in, uh, in parts of the mountains. So they're varied. Uh, we have Catholic hospitals. Uh, one in six patients in the United States gets treated in a Catholic hospital. Wow. So it's, it's a significant area. Colleges, there's 13 colleges in California, Catholic colleges, uh, high schools, grade schools. If you were to take the Catholic schools in California, uh, they would uh, be the second largest school district in the state if they were all put together. Um, LA Unified, of course, is the largest. It's probably maybe the largest in the country. Yeah. But... Uh, uh, our Catholic schools are, are tremendous, and they're a tremendous source of, 
of care uh, uh, for those that need uh, uh, a good education. They're, they're just absolutely wonderful resources. Um, so it's a very, very big community um, that we're talking about. And so as we work with that, uh, uh, the legislature and help uh, uh, educate Catholics, we have a certain core message that we're delivering. Um, and that m message starts with the dignity of the human person, the, the right to life and the dignity of the human person. And the human person is social. He lives in community. Um, our society today is me, me, me. What do I want? Um, what's my needs? But from our very, uh, I mean, we are basically social animals. And if you look in the, you look in the gospel, Jesus' healing mission, for instance, he healed people. What did he do? He said, go back to your family. Go back to your community. So it was something where, where he would restore people to community. That was the most important thing. Um, so uh, we work to, to uh, uh, promote the, uh, and support that social nature of the human being. Um, we also have a preferential option for the poor. And um, you know, why is that? Is because the poor have no voice on their own. And so it's important that somebody stand up for them. And again, that's foundational foundational to um, our faith. Uh, Jesus said, you know, you care for the poor. Um, one of the interesting things I find, and especially this year we've been talking a lot about end-of-life uh, uh, yeah. issues, you knew you were, uh, the early Christians in the first, second, third century, you knew who the Christians were because when the uh, plague hit a city, they were the ones that stayed and cared for the sick while well, everybody else went and got out of town safely. So, you know, there's that, that song, you know we are Christians. I mean, you could talk about you know we are Christians because we stayed and cared for the sick. And so that's foundational. And then we have a, a, uh, another uh, core message is respect of nature and stewardship of the environment, uh, stewardship of our resources. We're coming up on, on the one-year anniversary of La Dato Sea. So um, it's important that we... Uh, it's a whole new area that, of Catholic social teaching that Francis has opened up for us. And it's only been a year, but I think you'll see that coming and, oh, yeah. uh, coming and becoming more important in our churches. We have to take our break right now, but I want to remind you that we're going to be back not only for the second half of this program, but then in the middle half of the month, we'll be back with Steve with another program as we dig deeper and go more fully into the message of the California Catholic Conference as it impacts what we can be doing as faithful citizens. Stay tuned, but we're taking a break right now. KNXT, the nation's only full-powered broadcast station owned and operated by a Catholic diocese in the U.S. and streaming live on the Internet at KNXT.TV. Need your support to keep the message of the good news alive? Just go to KNXT.TV, click on the Make a Financial Gift, go to Donate, and fill out your one-time or monthly offering under PayPal. It's just that easy. Your donation makes it possible for KNXT, Catholic Television, to continue its ministry by celebrating the Mass and proclaiming the Gospel. Thank you from KNXT. Hello again, and welcome back to Catholic Social Teachings 101. I'm Jim Grant, and I'm here today with Steve Pahanich, who is the Senior Director for Advocacy and Education for the California Catholic Conference. Steve is sharing with us what his work is up in Sacramento, not for the Diocese of Sacramento, but rather for the conference for all of us in California, all Californian Catholics. Steve, you left off. I think we wanted to talk now a bit about if this is all true, we have a core message, we have an organization, we have a staff. What do Catholics have to say in the public setting? What is our function for public policy? Where is the um, commitment correct? Where would it be overstepping? Tell us about that part of your work. Well, when we advocate uh, in the Capitol, we're, we are, uh, take positions which we um, 
believe will promote the common good. Um, you know, uh, I'll have a conversation. I just had one earlier uh, in the week with somebody who said, well, I'm not Catholic, so why should I listen to you? Um, and it's not that we're uh, uh, saying you should do this because the Bible says so or something. We're, we're, we make those assertions based on our uh, evaluation in the common good and uh, natural law. I mean, the, the church has had a lot of experience dealing with people. Uh, and uh, we're trying to, to help people be uh, uh, the best people they can be. Uh, and, and, and in order to do that, you have to set up conditions. You have to have, well, first you have to have life. Um, you, you, you have to be able to be born. Uh, and then you have to be educated, fed. Um, you have the responsibility to do that for yourself. Uh, so, you know, our job is to help promote the environment where you can do that for yourself. Um, we believe uh, uh, face or shaping public policy is something we're called to do. We're called to bring the kingdom of God to uh, earth. The kingdom of God involves justice. So we are, we are strongly called and urged to, to act for justice. Um, and, you know, the, the basics of Catholic social teaching are something that, is, has, that has been developed over 2,000 years. Where did it start? It started, the, the, uh, it started in the gospel, first of all. But then in 1890, when, when uh, Pope Leo XIII started writing Rerum Novarum, what he was writing is about the labor conditions of children in the Industrial Revolution. And so... The church saw an injustice there, and um, uh, Pope started a tradition of Catholic social teaching in which we started to address those injustices. So, you know, we can't just let things go uh, by the wayside. And it's not just because our faith calls it to us, but we live in community. Oh, yeah. So we want to make the best possible community we have. Um, so now we have a, a, a Pope that um, has called us to work for justice. Um, I, I think it's great. I, I love Francis. He's a great guy. But frankly, all the other popes have been calling for the same thing, you know. So, um, but uh, uh, Francis has called us to work for justice. He's, you know, uh, you, you can't help but find good uh, statements from him. He says, you know, some people say Catholics shouldn't be involved in politics. He says, a good Catholic is involved in politics. And, you know, he's really working to... Um, to get us involved and get us aware of issues. I mean, half of involvement is just being aware of what's going on. Um, so, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, uh, promoting us or he's urging us on, which is exactly kind of his role. Well, what, what I really think we should give him some credit for, I think, is that he not only speaks it, not only talks it, but that in all of his ministry as Pope, he seems to witness to what it is that he speaks about. And I think that would be a challenge to us as a church to have that same ability not only to speak in favor of, but to be really committed to. And I think that's the best part of Francis is his ability to actually do what it is he's asking us to do. Yeah. So on that note, We've got our work cut out for us, especially now, Steve. There's just so many issues facing the world that the church needs to address. Yeah, I mean, you can tend to be, you can be overwhelmed. But as my wife always tells me, the world only had one Savior and it wasn't you. So You have that same message. Yeah, you get that same message. And so what <laughs> I tell people is you, you can get overwhelmed, but remember, a Christian is joyful. Uh, you know, the Pope has said that can't go around moping and um, you're joyful. But also the Holy Spirit causes, causes different things. Yeah. I mean, where's your passion as well? And so you have to listen to the call of the Spirit. And there's, there's a million things you could work on. But if you, if you spread yourself that thin, you're not going to be very effective. So where, where are you called to? That's what I tell people to look for that. And so it's, it's part of our, our faith tradition. It, it always has been. Um, and uh, it's also part of our American tradition. I like to quote Thomas Jefferson um, when he said that this nation is not ruled by the majority. It's ruled by the majority who participate. And, you know, we have a lot of people who could talk a lot. But are you participating in your community? Now, I'm not talking about just voting. 
I mean, we're focused on that now because it's an election year. But what else are you doing for your community? It may be as simple as coaching the Little League team. You know, uh, it doesn't, uh, or, or preparing sandwiches for the homeless or working with the Knights of Columbus or the St. Vincent de Paul Society on a, on a special project. Um, we're called to participate, and we can make our communities better by participating. So the bishops of the United States have put together uh, a document uh, called Faithful Citizenship. And they started it in the, in the 1980s or so, and then they revise it every presidential election year. So we're, um, uh, they've been doing that for since, since uh, around the, the early 80s. And it outlines Catholics' uh, moral and ethical responsibility to be involved in community. Like I said, we're focusing on voting, voting now because it's an election year, but that doesn't stop when you go in the ballot box. It's all year long. Um, so as, as Catholics, as Christians, we're committed to justice, and we work for that justice. Um, as we focus on our community, we focus on others. That service is something that is invaluable to ourselves, not just to the community, but it's something that helps fulfill ourselves that, that we, can, um, we can take to the bank, as, as it says. Um, I've, I've talked to people in, in uh, work for St. Vincent de Paul or a volunteer for St. Vincent de Paul Society, and they say after, uh, you know, after a visit, I thought I got more out of that yeah. than I gave. Now, we don't do it for selfish reasons. I don't want to convey that at all, but... Um, uh, we do it because we're, we're uh, told to do it by, by Jesus. So, uh, you know, if we could focus on, on voting now, because that's what's coming up. Everybody's concerned about the uh, November elections. Um, we understand that, you know, when we go to vote, it's how do we apply Catholic teaching to those policy decisions, those community decisions that we're called to make. So, for instance, in, in, um, in November, um, you've got the presidential race, you've got a Senate race. So, you know, we could talk about that, but, but maybe not on a family television show. Um, there might be 20 propositions on the ballot. And so if you go through those propositions, how do you decide? And, you know, what faithful citizenship would tell you is basically to use Catholic social teaching, the, the teachings of the Catholic faith combined with your own experience. So a good example, I think, here for the Central Valley is if, we, if there was a proposition on water policy, you know, you have the, the Catholic teaching is clean water, fresh water, it's essential to life. But it's also, you're in a farming community here, it's also important to jobs. So how do you balance that for the common good? You have common good not only with the Diocese of Fresno and the Central Valley, but also with the entire state, you know. Um, I always tell people what you think of water policy depends on whether you live north of the Tehachapi's or oh. south of the Tehachapi's. Oh, yeah. But we have to think together as a state because especially now that, you know, we've done, what, four or five years of drought, it's really become apparent for people. So uh, as a faithful citizenship we're, citizen, we're called to promote the common good. We're obligated to participate. We have to remember that life comes first, uh, but that we're not single-issue people. Um, we have no home in either party. That's very apparent um, oh, when yeah. you talk about anything from, from immigration to life issues to uh, care for the, for the poor to education. I mean, uh, they're all over the map. Most importantly, we're called to develop a well-formed conscience. And a conscience... A well-formed conscience is not just what we think may be right. It has to be educated. You start with <clears throat> what are the teachings of the church and then uh, add in your experience to that. But you've got to start with the teachings of the church and you've got to understand that. And we're called to work for a just society. What we've done so far today, <coughs> we have a, about a minute left, Steve, is introduce people to what are going to be more concrete parts that we'll talk about in our next program, which will be during the end of the month of July. 
But there's that principle that is very important, is that not only are we going to learn principles, but we will be learning responsibilities and duties. And we want to be looking at the concrete reality of our state. So the final slide that we might want to look at right now briefly as a bridge to next week, uh, to the next program we do, California Today. It's not a pretty picture, huh, Steve? I mean, the whole nation is not giving us a, um, a, very, a very appealing presentation. Well, it's, it's mixed news because just yesterday it was announced that California is now the sixth largest economy in the world. Wow. But it's not an even recovery. Not at all. And I think you probably realize that here in the Diocese of Fresno as much as do in other parts of the Central Valley. We have um, budget crisis. Even after the recession, there's still a lot of fighting about the budget. There's good reason for that. We have social and moral issues, uh, the right to life, the end of life. Um, you know, we say from conception, conception to natural death. Um, now we probably have to say from natural conception to natural death. There are, things are changing so much. And politics is just a search for ammunition. So, you know, what are Catholics to believe? Um, and I think in the next show we could talk a little bit about that. I want to thank Steve Perhanich, who came all the way from Sacramento to be our sole guest today. This is part of a continuing study that we're doing. And Steve mentioned that education is really the basis of what the California Co Catholic Conference wants to do. There is a website that we'll be talking about in the next program. There are resources that come to us, such as the California Legislative Network, the Catholic Legislative Network, based out of the conference. All of these resources are things that we'll be talking about in our next program and things that you'll be wanting to find on our website and on the website of cacatholic.org. Till next time, God bless.